All right, hey everyone. Let's talk about some training infrastructure. Uh, so we've seen a couple of videos, you know, four or five. Uh, I think and care more and worry more about a lot more clips than that. So we've been looking at the occupancy networks just from Phil. Just Phil's videos. It takes 1.4 billion frames to train that network, what you just saw. And if you have 100,000 GPUs, uh, it would take one hour, but if you have uh, one GPU, it would take 100,000 hours. So that is not a humane time period that you can wait for your training job to run, right? We want to ship faster than that. So that means you're going to need to go parallel. So you need uh, more compute for that. That means you're going to need a supercomputer. So this is why we've built in-house three supercomputers comprising of 14,000 GPUs where we use 10,000 GPUs for training and around 4,000 uh, GPUs for auto-labeling. All these videos are stored in 30 petabytes of a distributed managed video cache. Um, you shouldn't think of our data sets uh, as fixed, let's say, as you think of your image net or something, you know, with like a million frames. You should think of it as a very fluid thing. So we've got a, half a million of these videos flowing in and out of this cluster, these clusters every single day. And we track 400,000 of these kind of Python video instantiations every second. So that is, that's a lot of calls. We are going to need to capture that in order to govern the retention policies of this distributed video cache. So underlying all of this is a huge amount of infra, all of which we build and manage in-house. So you cannot just buy, you know, 14,000 GPUs and then 30 petabytes of Flash NVMe and just put it together and let's go train. Uh, it actually takes a lot of work, and I'm going to go into a little bit of that. What you actually typically want to do is you want to take your accelerator, so that could be the GPU or Dojo, which we'll talk about later, um, and because that's the most expensive component, that's where you want to put your bottleneck. And so that means that every single part of your system is going to need to outperform this accelerator. And so that is really complicated. That means that your storage is going to need to have the size and the bandwidth to deliver all the data down into the nodes. These nodes need to have the right amount of CPU and memory capabilities to feed into your machine learning framework. This machine learning framework then needs to hand it off to your GPU, and then you can start training. But then you need to do so across hundreds or thousands of GPU in a reliable way, in lockstep, and in a way that's also fast. So you're also going to need an interconnect. Extremely complicated. We'll talk more about Dojo in a second. So first, I want to take you through uh, some optimizations that we've done on our cluster. Uh, so we're getting in a lot of videos. And video is very much unlike, uh, let's say, training on images or text, which I think is very well established. Video is quite literally a dimension more complicated. Um, and so uh, that's why we needed to go end to end from the storage layer down to the accelerator and optimize every single piece of that. Uh, because we train on the photon count videos that come directly from our fleet, we train on those directly. We do not post process those at all. The way it's just done is uh, we seek exactly to the frames we select for our batch. We load those in, including the frames that they depend on. So these are your iframes or your keyframes. We package those up, move them into shared memory, move them into a double buffer on the GPU, and then use the hardware decoder that's only accelerated um, to actually decode the video. So we do that on the GPU natively. And this is all in a very nice Python, uh, PyTorch extension. Uh, doing so unlocked more than 30% training speed increase for the occupancy networks and freed up basically the whole CPU to do any other thing. Um, you cannot just do training with just videos. Of course, you need some kind of a ground truth. Uh, and uh, that is actually an interesting problem as well. The objective for storing your ground truth is that you want to make sure you get to your ground truth that you need in the minimal amount of file system operations and load in the minimal size of what you need in order to optimize for aggregate cross-cluster throughput. Because you should see a compute cluster as one big device which has internally fixed constraints and thresholds. So for this, we rolled out a format uh, that is uh, native to us that's called small. We use this for our ground truth, our feature cache, and any inference outputs. So a lot of tensors that are in there. Uh, and so just a cartoon here, let's say these are your, uh, is your table that you want to store, then that's how that would look out if you rolled out on disk. 
So what you do is you take anything you'd want to index on, so for example, video timestamps, you put those all in the header, so that in your initial header read, you know exactly where to go on disk. Then if you have any tensors, uh, you're going to try to transpose the dimensions to put a different dimension last as the contiguous dimension, and then also try different types of compression. Then you check out which one was most optimal, and then store that one. This is actually a huge tip if you do feature caching, unintelligible output from the machine learning network, uh, rotate around the dimensions a little bit, you can get up to 20% increase in efficiency of storage. Then when you store that, uh, we also um, order the columns by size so that all your small columns and small values are together so that when you seek for a single value, you're likely to overlap with the read on more values, which you'll uh, use later so that you don't need to do another file system operation. So I could go on and on. I just went on, uh, on, touched on two projects that we have internally, but this is actually part of a huge continuous effort to optimize the compute that we have in-house. Uh, so accumulating and aggregating through all these optimizations, uh, we now train our occupancy networks twice as fast just because it's twice as efficient. And now if we add in a bunch more compute and go parallel, we can now train this in hours instead of days. And with that, I'd like to hand it off to the biggest user of compute, John.